Now we're going to talk about significant figures. In most cases, it's impossible to obtain an exact value for a measurement, so we need to clearly indicate the significant figures or just what digits are actually meaningful in a calculation. The trick is, is that you've got to find the significant zeros in a problem. So we're going to learn some rules for that now. All non-zero numbers are significant. So in 65.3, all non-zero numbers here are significant. So I would say that that has three significant digits. The next rule is zeros between non-zeros are significant. We call it a zero sandwich. So right here, I've got a zero here and a zero here, both in between non-zeros. So because of that, I would say that there's six significant figures there. Zeros to the left of the first non-zero are not significant. This rule is a little bit confusing. So the biggest thing is you always want to find your first non-zero number. And then you want to identify if it's before or after a decimal. So because it's after a decimal and there's some zeros before this, we do not count those zeros as significant. So it's always really important. Zeros to the left of the first non-zero are not significant. So those first three zeros do not count. The next rule is zeros at the end of a number and to the right of the decimal. So to the right of the decimal is really important right here. To the right of the decimal. So zeros at the end and to the right of the decimal are considered significant. These two zeros are significant right here because of the zero sandwich rule. This zero is significant because it's to the right of the decimal and at the end of a, a number as well. So in this case this would have six significant digits because of that rule. And the last rule is for numbers without decimals the trailing zero may or may not be significant. So if this did not have a decimal point we would not know if that number was significant or not. There has to be a decimal point present for us to identify if that's a significant figure or not. So what we're going to do is use scientific notation on those. So and this is an example of scientific notation. So right here, I don't know if those zeros are significant or not because there's no decimal. If we had a decimal point right here, all of these values would be significant. So that's why we use scientific notation, so it's really important. So if I were to use scientific notation, there's a lot of different ways. This would be two significant digits. This would be considered three significant digits because that decimal point and those zeros are there. And this would only be considered one significant digit. If I were just looking at this value right here and I didn't give you any information about a decimal point, I would say that that is only one significant digit because there is no decimal point. So scientific notation is really important. So let's look at determining significant figures here. So in this first one, we've got four significant figures and... This would be rule two and a zero sandwich. So now what I want you to do is hit pause, try to identify those other significant figures, amounts, and the rules, and then hit play again and you'll listen to the explanation. So hopefully you hit pause on the video and now you're looking at how many significant figures are in these next ones. So you've identified on this next one that there's some left-handed zeros here, so those are not significant, and there's one right-handed zero, and because of that there's two significant figures. And rule three and zeros to the left do not count and then also rule four zeros at the end of the first of the non-zero and to the right of the decimal also count on this next one you've got the zero sandwich rule as well as zeros to the end so we've got rule two and rule four in play here and then on the last one it's actually kind of a trick question because there's no decimal point so we don't know if those lagging zeros are significant or not so I would have to tell you if there's a decimal point present Right now, if I didn't have a decimal point, I'd say it's only one, but it's still really vague. So scientific notation examples. When we do scientific notation, we only want the numbers 1 through 9 in front of the decimal point. It just makes it easier to deal with in our calculators. So what we want to do is identify where that decimal point's going to go. So right here, we've got 9.3. We don't want it to be 93. We want it to be 9.3. And then we're going to jump to where the end of the value is, where we would put our decimal point and we're going to count the, the, the number of jumps there. Because I've got a positive number here, I'm going to have, because I've got a really big number, excuse me, I'm going to have a positive integer on that superscript. You're going to count the jumps. It was seven jumps, so that means my superscript is going to be the number seven. And because I jumped to the right, it's going to be a positive superscript. So right here, again, we want numbers between one and nine, so I would want to start my decimal point right there. Because this is a small number, we're going to jump to the left. We jump nine times, and so our value right here represents that. And because we jumped to the left, it's going to be a negative superscript. 
We're going to work on scientific notation with calculators a lot in class, but this is a great practice slide, so what I want you to do is practice putting in 4 times 10 to the 23rd multiplied by 5 times 10 to the negative 12th in your calculator. If you don't get 2 times 10 to the 12th, you need to make sure that you come and talk to me during class because you are not putting scientific notation into your calculator correctly. So try to practice this slide, try to follow these steps to the best of your abilities using your calculator. I know a lot of calculators are different, so that's why it's going to be nice to be able to practice these in class with you. So we've got some rules for adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing significant figures. So the rule for adding and subtracting is the answer cannot have more digits to the right of the decimal point than the original. So you're looking at decimal points for adding and subtracting. Why is this important? Well, if you think about a lab report and a lab activity, and if you're using two different types of measuring devices, if you're using a triple beam balance, you're going to measure to the tenths place, as you learned before, and if you use an electronic balance, you're going to measure to the hundredths place, as you learned before. If I were to average those or multiply those at all, my my value cannot go past the tenths place if I were to average those, if I'm going to add those up, because I don't know what that final value is. So for example here, like I don't know what that value is, so I cannot report it in my final value. And that's why significant figures are important. So what you want to do when you're dealing with significant figures is you always want to add, do all the math first before you round. You don't want to you don't want to create your significant figures before you start. So in this case, I would do all of my math and get 90.432 as my, as my first answer. When I'm reporting it to the correct amount of sig figs, what I would want to do is round off there so that 90.43, that 3 is not going to cause that 4 to move up. So 90.4 is how I would re record that answer. So that's the correct answer for using sig figs. Multiplying and dividing what you're looking at is the total number of sig figs in the original. So in this case, this 2.8 has two sig figs. 4.5039 has five sig figs. So my answer cannot have more than the least amount in the original. So right here, it cannot have more than two significant figures. So the first thing that you want to do is do the math. Again, always do the math first. Don't round to your significant figures first. And then once you do the math, you're going to look at how many significant figures do I need? Well, this is 12.61092 is my total answer here. And because my original only has two sig figs in it, my answer can only have two sig figs in it. So I'm going to look at my answer here and say, all right, 12.6. That 6 is going to round that 2 up, and it's going to end up being 13 as the correct answer. All right, so now let's practice here. What I recommend when you have addition and subtraction problems using significant figures is that you put them above and below each other so that you can line up your decimal points. So that's what I'm going to do with this one. So once you do that, what I recommend then is that you draw your dotted line so that you cannot, so that you can see where you can report to. So, and then what I recommend that you do is do your math. So in this case, I cannot go past the tenths place, so I've done my math, I've drawn my dotted line, and then I see that when I'm reporting, this 9 is going to push that 2 up to a 3, so my total answer is 11,254.3 if I'm reporting that with the correct number of sig figs. So on the subtraction one, what you're going to do is again line it up. And in this one, it's pretty easy. They're both to the hundredths place. So you just do the math, and that's your final answer. On multiplication and division, what I recommend that you do is identify the number of sig figs that you have. So in this case, this one has three sig figs, and this one has five sig figs. So you should already be thinking to yourself, your answer cannot have more than three significant figures. So you want to do your math first, so I'm just going to set up my problem over here and do my math and get my calculation at first. So 41.90568 is my total answer. To report it to the correct number of sig figs, I know I can only have three significant digits in my answer, so my correct reporting of that answer is 41.9, because that zero isn't going to do anything to that nine. And then when you're multiplying and dividing, again, identify the three sig figs um, for each. In this one right here, this only has three sig figs because of your zero to the left rule. So then once you do that, you're going to get this value, and it actually ends up being a negative exponent value. So 1.74 times 10 to the negative 4 is the correct answer there. And I, do, I would appreciate if you did represent that in scientific notation. So now you're ready with significant figures, you've listened to the lecture part, and now you're ready to practice in class. Thanks.